we were looking at how keys are generated on the Ethereum blockchain. And just by accident, we walked across a guy that happens to steal $4 million worth of Ethereum from 5,000 different people. My name is Adrian Bednarik, and I'm a security analyst and researcher at Independent Security Evaluators. So when you create a wallet on Ethereum or other blockchains, the main thing protecting you is a private key. If somebody knows your private key, they're able to act as you or as the owner of that wallet. And the thing that protects your wallet is the statistical improbability that somebody else, when they generate their wallet, creates the wallet with the same key. On Ethereum, the private key is 256 bits, uh, which amounts to a huge number. It's, it's hard to imagine the scale, but it's basically, if you narrow down the scope and say, hey, um, go to the beach and pick up a grain of sand and throw it back on the beach, and then tell your friend to go find that exact same piece of grain of sand, except it's multiplied by a billion gazillion times. Having another key on the blockchain that by chance happens to overlap somebody else's private key, it, it's impossible. So your wallet is protected by a really big number. Um, even though it's statistically improbable to guess this number that's protecting your wallet, we were able to find 735 of them that exist on the blockchain. So it's impractical to search the entire 78 digits that can make up a private key. What we did is divided the private key into eight sections. Each section has a range from one to 4.2 billion basically. It's basically a nine digit key. Doing that, we were able to enumerate each section from one to 4.2 billion sequentially, one, two, three, four, in each section of the key space. Uh, and we did that for every single section all eight sections, and that's how we uh, encountered 735 valid private keys that were used on the blockchain. So I think there's three things at play here that generate weak private keys. One is coding errors. Um, software could be generating long keys, but if there's uh, simple coding errors made, then that long random key could be put into a value or a register or a variable inside of the software that can't hold that entire value. So that's a case of key truncation where the entire private key that's generated isn't used in the final form. Um, another method is maybe people were using brain wallets. A brain wallet is where you basically use a password or a passphrase to generate a private key. So let's say for instance, if you use the passphrase ABC123, you'll get a private key and another person that uses ABC123 will get the same private key. Um, so you'll have key collision happening there. Um, we've seen cases where people were using blank passphrases for wallets. That is like when they create their wallet and it's asking you for your passphrase to protect your wallet, which is super really important. People were just hitting enter and they're like, I don't care, just generate a key for me. Um, another method could be maybe the software worked, everything worked as intended, but sometimes you're calling cryptographic providers that are built into hardware and maybe they were faulty. And when the software was calling the hardware random number generator, it was either returning an error value or just returning um, incredibly weak keys. So it's impossible to know of the 735 we found why they were generated in a weak way because all we have is a weak private key. So when we enumerated bad private keys and looked at the associated wallets, we analyzed how money was being taken in and out. Some wallets had high volumes of transactions. Some wallets had like 5,000 transactions. We paid closer attention to those higher value transactions and we noticed they were going to an address that had 5,000 inbound transactions only. Like there was no money going out, it was only money, money going in. So there was a guy that had an address that was going around and basically siphoning money from some of the keys we had access to. We found 735 private keys. He happened to take money from 12 of those keys we also had access to. 
um, it's statistically improbable that, you know, he would guess those keys by chance. So he was probably doing the same thing. He was in the Marine Week private keys and basically stealing funds as soon as they came into people's wallets. We were doing a, an assessment for a cryptocurrency company and part of being a security researcher is in order to figure out how to break something, you got to understand how it works. So I was trying to understand how exactly wallet generation works and the mechanisms behind it to create random numbers to create the private keys. Um, by accident, I stumbled upon a guy that stole, you know, uh, thousands of Ethereum worth millions of dollars. And he was able to steal over 4,000 Ethereum over the past two years, which when the market was at its height and Ethereum was worth $1,000, he was sitting on $44 million. Um, at today's market value, he only has $4.2 million. So he lost $40 million. Don't you feel bad for him? <laughs> <laughs>